Welcome to this episode of Mark Menendez Bass TV. 23 degrees. You can see the breath, see the clothes. I think I need my head examined. But we're going to go catch some on Kentucky Lake today. Stay tuned for Mark Menendez Bass TV. It's dead winter and Mark is back on the home pond of Kentucky Lake. He had a recent outing fishing the same area where he had a very successful day. The conditions, however, are different. Air temperature has dropped considerably and there isn't a cloud in the sky. The water temperature has taken a nosedive as well. Mark will alternate between a Strike King Series 3 crankbait and a KVD J300 deep jerkbait, hoping that the bass are still in a feeding mood. Felt like two. Oof. Already starting to see ice form on my guides after the five cast. It's cold. It's darn cold. I remember a Bassmaster Open tournament, my first season, fall of 91. The high for the week was 35 degrees, and that was at weigh in on the third day of the tournament. There were several days below freezing. Water temperatures are not going to fall too much. Just about like that on the pause. Just like that on the pause. Ah, uh, that's a good little old fish right there. Look, he just came up, swiped at it. It was Gamakatsu's got him. On the pause. Come on up here, young man. How about that? How about that? Frigid, below freezing, and they're biting. Nice chunk to get started with. How about that? Put him back. What I was going to say before Junior bit that was water temperatures fall and activity level it's not going to be that big of a fall when you drop a degree or two. We were 56 here the other day. It's pro I haven't even checked my water temperature gauge yet. It was so cold it wouldn't even come on. My goodness, there's a good one. That is a dandy right there. Where's my line? No, he just smoked it. But they still are active, even in this cold water, even on these changes. There's a nice little bass. He must have hit it from distance. Look at there. Uh, there you go. That tells you. Look, he, he's hooked on top of the nose. Hooked on top of the nose. So he smoked it. Oh, goodness gracious. My hands are so cold. But look at that little wintertime unit right there. Fat as can be. Got him a black spot on his nose. Let's get him back out there and let's get another one. That's back to back cast. Right there. What I'm trying to explain is, is activity level still good. Even if it drops a degree or two, it's not going to stop them from chasing and biting. It's going to stop me more so than them. So be prepared and be ready and have the right stuff here. That's back to back. I thought that was a full grown one, the way that one bit it. Ah, golly. Now my hands are wet. I'm freezing to death. <laughs> Mark's first stop is a stretch of riprap that has been good to him over the years. After a few casts with his crankbait, he switched up to a jerkbait, and it paid off quickly with two nice and healthy Kentucky Lake largemouth. He'll fish slow and parallel the riprap, allowing him to cover water efficiently and also keep his bait in the strike zone a little longer. We have more bait in the lake than we've had in a long time, both gizzard and threadfin. But I'm seeing schools of threadfin shad now that the other day I saw about an acre's worth of threadfin shad in one school. I haven't seen that in eons. Idling out this morning, I saw several pods of bait back there that were as big as this boat or bigger. That's why our bass and crappie population is coming back so well. Wish they were four pounders. Just like that one. There's a good one. That's a good, good one right there. A good one. 
I mean, that is a nice bass right there. Look here, look here, look here, look here. That is a gigantic one for this time. Look at that one, look at that one. Oh my God, I barely got him hung. He's got one hook in him now. Let's go chase him a little bit, wear him out. Never felt him bite it, he just was on there. Don't you do that, don't you do that. Stay pegged, buddy. Stay pegged, I mean, he's a good one. Now I got him, now I got him plug turned on him in. Look at that big job. Tell me my lake's not coming back. Come here. Come here, he's over here. I'm afraid to pull on him too hard. He's barely got one hook in him. Looky, looky what I found. How about that 23 degrees? Look at that Kentucky Lake Special. Wow. Wow. Jerkbait City. I mean, that's a good one right there. <laughs> it paid to get up out of bed this morning. It paid. That's what those extra sharp gamakatsus do for you. I traded hooks. I barely had him hooked right there and he turned. And when he turned, I got him. Look at that. Man, I'm not too cold right now. Got one big spot on his head. One big spot. How about that? Jiminy Christmas. I didn't expect that this morning. How about that? All right. Let this dog go. That's a good one. Man, that will warm you up on a really cold morning. What an unexpected pleasure that was. Wow. Girl's back. The girl's back. She's coming back, guys. I like it. I'm liking what I'm seeing. You know, the, the main thing with a jerk bait, in warmer water temperatures, it's jerk, 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 pause, jerk, 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 pause. But as water temperatures slow down and get colder, so do the bass. And your job with this jerk bait is finding a cadence. So far, it's been a, a jerk, jerk, pause, and the pause is about two and a half seconds is what I've been doing. Water temperatures are a little warm. They're 53, 54, 55 degrees still. So they're a little more active and they'll come to it a little better. The general rule of thumb, the colder the water, the softer the jerk, and the longer the pause. I've been successful with jerk baits in the past where my pause was 15 seconds on my first national BASS tournament on the Tennessee River doing this and it was a 15 second pause and it made all the difference in the world. There were other anglers in the area and um, I continued to outfish them all three days uh, and won the event by seven pounds. But you really have to experiment with your how hard you're jerking the bait and the pause. Color's a secondary issue. I have a summer sexy shad on here which is my absolute favorite color jerk bait anymore. Um, color will be a real big deal on um, how far that fish can see that bait. Sometimes it's a strobe color with a lot of chartreuse in it if you're around smallmouth. But this uh, summer sexy with that white belly on it's a big deal. It mimics a bait fish 100% perfectly. So uh, experiment during the day with your cadence and your pause and how long you pause. And it'll make a big difference. It's almost freezing on Kentucky Lake, but the bite is on fire this morning. Mark has a cadence dialed in with his jerk bait and he's getting bites. And not just quantity, but some real quality. He's landed a kicker largemouth, showing that Kentucky Lake has still got him. The future looks promising, but the day isn't over yet. Mark is going to keep trying to replicate this pattern and add more bass to his total. There he is. It doesn't feel, I just don't know. You know just thumped it. He thumped the heck out of it there. Got my line all turned around. Now he hit that by the head. Ah, you know he was looking dead at that one. When you're getting them to bite them, bite on the head like that, you got the right deal. That's the old strobe color. 
chartreuse, clear with a bluish purple back on it. Generally a small mouth getter, but got me a little large mouth on that one. How about that? I mean, he bopped it. He knocked it for a loop. That's what we're looking for right there. Jerkbait is headed in that direction right now. I'm getting, there's my jerkbait above him. There's the jerkbait right there at 20 feet. Look at those fish right there. A couple of them looked up at it. Some ice build up. I'm using, as you can see, I've got eight pound fluoro on here. This is eight pound Invis X on this rod. I've got eight pound Tatsu on the other rod for a jerk bait. And I'm convinced that fishing this jerk bait in cold weather, the eight pound line is the absolute necessity. Gets the bait down an extra foot deeper. And it just has a more lifelike action to it uh, when you twitch that bait. They're not going to pull hard, so you're not in any danger of breaking one off. Eight's tough stuff. Um, kind of hold on and lead them around, and they give up pretty easy. But eight makes a big difference on how many bites you get in a day's time, in my opinion. I came back and refished this area again with a different color, and at the beginning of the drift, I caught a little bass so when you find an area that's got a few fish around it don't just leave after a pass turn around change your angle change your color and come back through it and it might yield one or two more bass in a tournament situation that can mean the difference between not getting a check getting a check or even winning the event so with that having been said um, a different color change will activate a fish that you may have not really excited on the first pass, or it might put it in front of another fish that was wanting something totally different. So always come back through an area and give it another chance, and you will be rewarded more often than not. There he is. Oh, man, let's see here. Ah, how about that? Now here's one I haven't seen in a long, long time. And this is the old, I'm not gonna grab him like that because he's got sharp gill plates. That's a little yellow bass. See that little yellow tint right there? That's good to see some of those. Have not seen one of these in a long time. For whatever reason, giant largemouth love to eat these little guys. Now I don't care if you're on Kentucky Lake, Gunnersville, Lake Fork, Rayburn, when you get around yellow bass, you're around the absolute dinner table for a big one. You know, it's really good to see that little yellow bass. I'm seeing fish populations change. I'm seeing different species of fish come back. Filmed the other day and I caught a bunch of white, fit, white bass and rockfish. A yellow bass. I've caught some uh, yellow perch in the lake. Uh, you know, our shell crackers are, are coming back. Our crappie are coming back. I'm really positive on this incremental step that the lake is making. Mother Nature is is bringing her back from the decimation of the carp. Will she get back to what she once was? I don't know. Time will tell. But I'm really excited about what I'm seeing in our lake. Shad, gizzard shad, threadfin. And all of those fish that eat those are really on the way back. So I, I, I can't stress how good the lake once was, but it's not bad right now. It's not bad. It's getting better. It's been a cold and sunny day, but the bite has been consistent. Kentucky Lake is showing out. For all the ecosystem changes and tough days, she's showing she may not be done yet. With the rise of bait fish populations, the game fish populations are rising as well. Mark's not done either. He's showing off his jerkbait prowess. He will continue combing the riprap and may venture across the lake in search of a smallmouth. He's really confident he's got a solid pattern going. There we go. There we go. I don't 
don't know what I've got here. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do too. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm trying to get out of this wind where I can get turned. Look at that old smally in the jaw. He just came up and nipped it. He didn't get it good, but he just nipped it. I'm gonna try to boat flip him with one hook. Hopefully this will work. Got him. Nice small mouth. There's a good looking little old small mouth. There's a, almost a 16 incher. Never felt it. Just got funky and heavy. Funky and heavy about that. Old brown lips. We have got them in this lake now. Some are sexy on a small job. That a boy. That a boy. Never felt it. Just, I guess it just kind of ran into it. Just. had it on the side of his face and I really didn't know how big he was. Water over here on the east side of the lake is about a degree warmer than it was on the west side of the lake. Because that is a typical phenomenon with the river channel over here. That's what makes the east side of the lake a better place to be most of the time in the late fall and winter. We're gonna have to move. There he is. Oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my. That was almost like a worm bite. My blind started moving out before I realized I was hooked up. Oh, black tail on him, look at him down there fighting. He thought he was gonna get him a bite to eat, didn't he? He got that one by the head, didn't he? Look how painted up his fins and tail are. I can get down here and get him. He's about as cold as I am. He looks like he's a tar baby, isn't he? Look at that. Quit you flopping around here. Come here, come to me. Come to me, Junior. Don't jump off, don't jump off, don't jump off. I can't get him with the way he's got the jerk bait, but I got him now. <sighs> Look at that one. He got it by the head, didn't he? Find my pliers. I'll take a picture of that old fish's black tail. How about that? I mean, how many times have you been fishing with a plastic worm and your line take off running? That's exactly what that felt like. Exactly. Boy, those hooks are sharp. Look at that. I mean, that tail is as black as coal. Got him another spot right there. Big old calico looking dude. Nice bass, cold weather. Don't let it stop you. They still gotta eat too. He's still mad. Look at him. Look at him. Go. <laughs> there he goes. All right. Dude, that was crazy. I twitched that bait, and it's like, there goes my line. Never felt a bite. Never felt it load. It was, he already had it and was swimming off with it. That's one of the weirdest jerkbait bites I've ever gotten in my fishing career. That was strange. Mark Menendez Bass TV is brought to you by Skeeter Boats, Seagull, Blues, Feel the Difference, Strike King Lure Company, Motor Guide, Never Stop. Closed captioning provided by Dissafe.